Are you still wondering about TRT and blood clot risk? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to revisit this topic on TRT and blood clot risk. We got some new information to look at, and we're going to look at it in a more nuanced way. Is it the hematocrit that's raising blood clot risk? Is it estrogen that's raising blood clot risk? Is it the testosterone itself? Or is it not increasing your risk of blood clot and you shouldn't worry about it at all? We're going to look at all these topics and more and what some of the science says about TRT and increasing your risk of blood clot. So hopefully these videos are helping you get a better understanding of what's going on in your body. If you're liking the videos, please like and subscribe to continue getting videos like these. Again, my name is Dr. Taranella and I make these videos to help you understand your health better, but they're not made for any specific individual. So here in this video, I wanted to revisit this aspect of testosterone replacement therapy and its association with the risk of blood clots. This topic has yielded varied findings across multiple studies and also got several questions about this in the comments when I posted previous videos on TRT and blood clot risk. And really, depending on how you read the studies and which studies you look at, you're going to come to different conclusions based on what you look at and how you interpret those studies. Possibly even worse is if you don't read the studies at all and can't come to any real clear conclusions. I have read the studies and tried to look at the results that I did come in contact with as far as the research in a very balanced way. I do prescribe testosterone replacement therapy to my patients, and I do typically recommend that they donate blood when they have elevated hematocrit. And I made a video on this topic a few months ago. Feel free to check out that video here if you want to see it. So what's changed? Why am I doing another video on this topic? Well, the reason is I was sent a video from a viewer that asked me to look at a video from another doctor breaking down some of the research that he thought was important and why he thinks that there's not really a big risk for managing clotting when you're on TRT. And there'll be a link in the description. I thought it was a good video and caused me to want to look at this a little bit deeper. We're always learning new things and trying to understand things in more nuanced ways. So before I give you my updated conclusion, please allow me to show you how I came to that conclusion. And before we do that, let me preface this by saying there are only a few possibilities in terms of proposed mechanisms for or by which testosterone could, if it does, increase the risk of clotting. Number one, which is the main one, is increased hematocrit or elevated hematocrit. By slowing the flow of blood throughout the body, there's increased risk for those platelets and other clotting factors to create a blood clot. Other possibilities include higher estradiol levels, which has been associated with clotting more so in females, but has been associated with that, and possibly the testosterone itself causing some interaction with some of the clotting factors. So when studies find there is not an increased risk or they don't specifically look at these variables like hematocrit testosterone levels and estrogen levels, it may not help us that much. So let's say hematocrit is the main thing that's increasing your risk of clots. And you look at a pool of people that were on testosterone for say one or two years, but their hematocrit isn't measured or looked at, the study concludes that testosterone does not increase blood clots. Well, that's great for people that don't have increased hematocrit that are on testosterone. The same is true for the other variables like estrogen and testosterone itself. So with all that being said, let's look at some of the studies and what some of the information we can glean from these studies. So one study that did find an increased risk of blood clot was looking at particularly the initiation of testosterone testosterone replacement therapy. And they found that there was an increase in blood clots specifically in the first six months and diminished over time. Specifically, starting TRT within half a year leads to a 63% increase in the rate of venous thrombosis or VTE. And that equates to about 10 extra blood clots per 10,000 people. And that's over the standard base rate that we would expect in the general population. But it was a transient increase. So it was only for the first six months when you started testosterone replacement therapy. In particular, it was the first three to six months that seemed to have this response, which is a bit confusing. Why would it only increase for the first six months or the first three months? Well, high hematocrit could account for that because sometimes it does take three to six months for it to go up. And there is going to be some variance per person and also how high their testosterone is in how much 
their hematocrit increases is going to vary from one person to the next. And just so you know, testosterone does get aromatized or changed into estrogen in the body. So when you're on testosterone replacement therapy, it's common to have that conversion going on and elevated estrogen levels has been known to influence coagulation factors and platelet aggregation or clumping, which is part of the clot formation as well. But let's look at another study. So this was a case-controlled study. So it looked at over 30,000 men age 40 and above that were part of a commercial insurance. This particular study found no increased risk for thrombosis associated with testosterone replacement therapy. So this definitely adds some reassurance for those that are worried about clot risk uh, when they're on TRT. But what we don't have in this study as well is what level of testosterone were the men on and did they actually have high hematocrit or what was going on with their hematocrit and also their estrogen levels. Another interesting study looking at clot risk and TRT compared the risk of clotting in men that were on testosterone replacement therapy versus clomiphene citrate. This is actually one of the studies that was highlighted in the other video that that viewer sent to me. Their findings were that there's a relatively low overall risk of DVT with most cases being attributed to factors other than the testosterone itself. And they suggested that while the testosterone replacement therapy patients may face higher DVT incidence compared to those on Clomid, the overall risk remained pretty low. This study was nice because they did look at hematocrit levels before and after, and they considered a normal as being under 52 and normal estradiol as 60 picograms per ml. The total testosterone targets for those on testosterone or clomiphene were somewhere in the high 600s. So they noted that the population risk for VTE is around 0.2%. And so accounting for known risk factors for those that had clots in the study, it was pretty much in line with what you would expect at the population around that 0.2% range. Overall, I think that's a fair assessment. And to me, it highlights the difference between being on very high levels of testosterone and physiologic levels of testosterone. Sometimes we think we're on physiologic levels, but we're all actually on much higher than we think. And so it's important to have your, those levels checked and calibrated to, you know, what's normal or typical. They also did note that those people that did have the thrombotic events did have a normal or a hematocrit that was 52% or less. So I'll make sure there's a link to most of these studies in the description as well. But let's move on and look at another study. So this study is a multi-center randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study with over 5,200 men on TRT with pre-existing or higher risk for cardiovascular disease. They did find an increased risk of venous thrombosis or blood clots in the testosterone-treated group. They adjusted the dose of testosterone to maintain testosterone levels between 350 and 750 per deciliter, which is a pretty healthy range depending on the person and what their free testosterone is as well, but it's certainly not a very high range. They also had people People discontinue testosterone replacement therapy when their testosterone levels exceeded 750 milligrams per deciliter or in patients that had a hematocrit that exceeded 52% even after adjustment to the lowest dose. So basically, if they tried to lower the dose and the testosterone levels kept being high or the hematocrit kept being high, they excluded those people from the study. So this study obviously emphasizes the need for more cautious consideration of the risks for TRT and blood clots in. And of course, there are a lot of benefits too, which we're not going to go into here, but particularly those people with increased cardiovascular risk may have more things to consider when they're going on TRT. And the level of testosterone in this group was probably managed a little bit higher than the previous group. And they did have higher risk for blood clots anyways, having known cardiovascular disease. So the mixture of those things may have increased their risk for clotting and increased the overall incidence of clotting in this particular study. But again, to me, it highlights highlights the physiological ranges versus super physiological ranges. And also what's interesting is they basically excluded people that had high hematocrit. So it's sort of suggesting that there's something independent of the hematocrit that's causing these increased clotting risks. So in this last study, they looked at the impact of testosterone replacement 
treatment therapy on fibrinogen levels. And fibrinogen is one of those coagulation factors or factors that encourage clotting. These were in men with chronic but stable angina that were getting testosterone replacement therapy. And they were basically trying to understand if testosterone replacement therapy affects the overall blood coagulation cascade. And what they found is exactly what I've been emphasizing is that physiologic testosterone replacement therapy didn't really adversely affect blood coagulation status. So this suggests that TRT might be used safely without increasing your risk of blood clotting or thrombus. But it's also important to note that individual responses to testosterone are going to vary. And the effects of testosterone on things like fibrinogen and estrogen and other potential clotting factors are going to be different at different doses of testosterone and different levels of testosterone. So these are all important variables to keep in mind. And just so you know, in this study, they were managing the levels of testosterone pretty low. So they did look at the bioavailable levels of testosterone in this last study, and they only changed from baseline to dosing of testosterone by about one point in nanomoles per liter, and that's about 22 points in picograms per ml. So it was statistically significant raise from the baseline, but it's still overall not a huge amount considering the typical testosterone replacement therapy targets. Most clinics are going to have much more aggressive targets for their TRT. So I'm not sure we can fully trust that fibrinogen and other clotting factors would not change in the presence of much higher testosterone dosing, but it is nice to see that some relative increases in testosterone may not be really changing the fibrinogen or other clotting factors. So there are a lot of things to consider with this question about TRT and clotting risk and hematocrit, but I think the main one is the difference in dosing strategies for most of the studies. Most of the studies were looking at physiologic levels versus always riding those upper limits for total and free testosterone. And also, do you have a hematocrit of 50 or 51 or 56, or is it in the 60s? Those changes are definitely going to change the risk profile, the risk for clotting. And I really haven't seen a study looking at this level of nuance with much higher testosterone levels and much higher hematocrit. I suspect that we would find a different result in much higher hematocrit people. I do think the overall risk for clotting with TRT is relatively low, but it's also considering your levels of actual testosterone and are they physiologic or are they super physiologic and your hematocrit levels as well. Most people don't really know they have clotting risk factors until they actually have a clot. And also most things in the human body are sort of on a spectrum. You know, you may have a little bit higher risk of clotting on one end and you may have a lower risk of clotting on the other end. Some people may be closer to that but not have an actual clotting disease and some people may be super low on that spectrum, if you will. The evidence for the risk of blood clots on TRT definitely points to a more nuanced perspective than yes or no. TRT at physiological levels and normal hematocrit, for sure, I would say that's pretty low risk. But what about when you're on the upper end of testosterone replacement therapy and upper end, high end for hematocrit? I think there probably is a slightly increased risk in those populations. Probably it's the higher the hematocrit, the more risk. So I think monitoring your hematocrit for those that tend to have elevated hematocrit and when you're undergoing testosterone replacement therapy, you definitely want to be measuring your hematocrit because as it gets above 50, 52, your risk probably is going up. Still, the absolute answer on this question definitely remains unanswered. Does high hematocrit lead to increased blood clots? For me at the moment, I think the answer is yes. And I am aware that there are populations that live at higher elevation and don't necessarily have increased risk of blood clots, but there's also evidence suggesting surgeries and things like that that are done at higher elevations do increase the risk for blood clot. I may do a separate video looking specifically at high hematocrit levels in different populations to really try and understand this topic. So let me know in the comment section if that's something that would be helpful for you to understand. Also, if you have specific questions about anything that we covered in this video, definitely drop those in the comment section as well. If you want a more customized, well thought out answer. Consider joining the membership program. We'll have more time and attention to dedicate to your questions. Either way, I'll definitely try and answer your questions. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time.